Hi, Scorpio Risings, and welcome to your astrology and tarot horoscopes for this beautiful new moon in Cancer. Um, I am Lisa from Trails Edge Astrology, and I am happy to be here with you. If you are here, and if you like what you see, I would sure appreciate it if you would give me a like, and if you would subscribe, um, share this with your friends if you like it, help me grow this channel and share my message. I would be eternally grateful. All right, so what's going on for this Cancer New Moon um, that we have coming up? Um, actually, it's today, now that I think about it. Um, July 5th, Friday, July 5th, we have a Cancer, we have this new moon in Cancer. So the new moon um, colors the rest of the month. So whatever energy that new moon brings in is really um, transmitted throughout the month and we can feel it and reverberate it. And whatever transits are going on around that moon also um, speak into that energy. So really important um, in my mind to look at the lunar cycles and to think about how we want to engage with them and what we want to invite in. So um, Cancer Full Moon is always about big feelings, big emotions, um, intuition, just that watery, watery, secure, nurturing kinds of energy. And for you, Scorpio Rising, uh, the Cancer energy sits in your ninth house. And your ninth house is about um, your faith, your belief, um, it's about foreign ideas and travel. It's about teaching and learning. It's about philosophy. It's also the house of astrology. <laughs> so fun there, in my opinion. Um, so any of those kinds of things are getting illuminated. Now, cancer is always rules your ninth house. So that's nothing new or unusual for you. It's always in that space. And the new moon gives us a chance to kind of highlight that area of our lives and think about what we might want to bring in in that space. So around the new moon, we also have the Mercury-Pluto opposition. And I talked about that in a one-minute astrology on Wednesday, so I'm not going to go into detail on it. You can hop back over and listen if you're interested. Um, but, but for you, Scorpio Risings, Pluto is showing up in your fourth house. So there is some transformation going on over 20 years. So this isn't anything that happens quickly, but some transformation going on around home, family, roots, ancestors, any of those kinds of like, like the deeply, deeply private parts of your life. Um, and with this Mercury opposition, so Mercury is in Leo right now, and the opposition to that Pluto energy um, can can give us another perspective. So when planets are opposite each other, they're as far apart as they can possibly be, and that distance really um, it can cause us to project onto that other planet. Or it can it can help us see that we're on the same path, but we are um, maybe coming at it from different angles. In this case, Pluto is sitting in the most private part of your chart, and Mercury is sitting in the most public part of your chart. And so it's really that private public dichotomy, and like like all of it is how do you show up to be authentically yourself? But you're coming at it from very very different angles. Uh, part of the reason that I want to bring this up is that um, Mercury moves fast, so this transit is already passed, but Venus is coming in to do the same thing to oppose Pluto, and then the sun will come in and oppose Pluto. So those two things are happening quickly um, and throughout the month, and they will color the flavor of July. They will that will flavor this. Oppositions can be a little tense and a little, um, you know, we just, we can tend to put out, um, we tend to, to project project our feelings, project our ideas onto other people um, in ways that may or may not be helpful. So so looking at that public-private private parts of your life or that home and work, those kinds of things um, will be important during this cycle, um, especially as you focus on that part of your chart, the your, your faith, your wisdom, your learning, your uh, abstract thoughts, you know, those parts that are being... Um, being activated with this new moon. So we also have a Mars uh, Saturn sextile happening, um, uh, co-present with this new moon. And I think that hopefully will give us some nice um, grounded stability with all this wateriness and all of this, um, you know, 
the potential potential kind of like like deep feelings and oppositional energy and all of that i think uh, uh, mars uranus or i'm sorry mars um saturn sextile could just help um you know just help give us some foundation just uh, mars is how we enact our will in the world and saturn helps us um, build sacred structures and build foundations so that we can be stable so uh, so i think there's a little bit of stabilizing energy there um in a month that i think is going to be deeply feeling and is going to have some potential for some heated moments speaking of which uh much of this month will be colored by the mars uranus conjunction so mars is already in taurus uranus is in taurus um, but they come together on the 15th we will start feeling that energy next week if you're not feeling it already um typically we feel mars energy as it comes in more so than than we feel all planets as they come in but but mars in particular and in particular as it meets uranus so um for you, Scorpio rising, um, this energy is happening in your house of committed relationships. So uh, could be romantic partnerships, could be friendships, like one-on-one, -on -one really, really key, like your bestie kind of thing. It could be business partnerships, any of those real interconnected, um, committed partnerships. So that's where it's happening. This energy has been being transformed for you probably all year. Um, Jupiter Uranus were conjunct in this spot in your chart in April. And, um, and the eclipses in April were all around this area of your life. And so, um, so as, you know, as we step into this next chapter, so, so that April energy may have seeded something or, or brought something up, but it might not have been ready to be born at that point. It might just have been an idea and maybe it's laid dormant for a little bit. And now it's kind of this Mars Uranus is going to bring it up in kind of an unexpected way. It'll come out of the blue. Um, uh, Mars is Mars and Taurus is the bull in the China shop and Uranus is the cattle prod. So it like, it's, it has the potential to be, to be fast and really like, uh, like out of left field and, and can be uncomfortable. But, but remember that just because something is unexpected doesn't mean that it's not good in the end, or doesn't mean that it's not something that you want. It very well could be. Um, so invite it in and work with the universe to make it something that is beneficial for you and moves you forward along the path. So, um, so that's how the astrology is shaping up for you. So I really see, uh, for the Scorpio risings, I see, um, illumination or, or the invitation to build something around faith and belief, uh, learning, experiencing foreign kinds of ideas or travel or, you know, like, like, learning out of the normal scope of day-to-day -day life. So there's something in that area, um, something related to uh, this public-private part of your life and how that shows up for you, and then something related to relationships. So those things are all going to be themes that show up in varying ways in your life this month, depending on how you, how, how your placements are in your chart and how other things line up. So I think overall, July is a good month for introspection. I think it can be a month that goes fast or can there can be some sudden jolts. And so I think our work to do is really to turn inward and really to use that Cancer new moon to um, listen to our heart, listen to our gut, just really feel into our body and, um, and really um, check in with ourselves first, make sure we feel safe before we take the next step out into the world. So, um, so with that, let's look at what the cards say to support your progress. So we are going to use the Mind's Eye Tarot deck. I got this a few weeks ago at Hazel Jane in Effingham, and I adore it. I think it's beautiful. And so I've been using it almost exclusively, and uh, I wanted to share with you. Uh, we're going to do a spread that is the new moon spread that I use in my private practice. Um, it's five cards, and so I hope you like it. Let me know. Um, it's As I say, it's the one I usually use, so, um, so I think it works. And we're going to finish off with um, an oracle reading from the Season of the Witch Litha Oracle deck. Um, Litha is the summer solstice, which of course was at the end of June. 
And I usually engage with the summer solstice energy through the first new moon um, after the solstice. Um, because the solstice is solar, it's about where the sun is in the sky, but I but I tend to follow lunar cycles more exactly, so we're going to keep using that deck. All right, so that's what we're going to do. Let's see what it has to say about how all this will show up for you. All right, our first card is Where Are You Now? And, my Scorpio friends, you got the Ten of Pentacles. So the Ten of Pentacles is about legacy and is about stability. Um, tens are the end of the journey, so maybe a building process that has gotten you to a place. Um, it's a place where you feel secure and, and you know, like like things are together in a material way. Pentacles are about the material world. So maybe a job that is really coming together, or maybe your family is looking, you know, making some transformation or somehow, somehow there's some stability around that, that area, that 10 of pentacles kind of energy. Um, yeah, something, something grounded and tangible, as I say, usually I think of pentacles as, as work, but it can also be like a garden. It can be, um, you know, any kind of physical manifestation, any kind of sensual kind of experience. Um, and this is a culminating kind of energy. So tens are uh, an ending, and we all know that endings are actually new beginnings. So so I wonder if where we are now, we've we've built something and we've gotten to a point where we're ready to set it free or ready to move into the next thing. I don't know. Um, but something about something about culmination. This is a nice card. Um, you know, it it um, it's a nice ending. It's a happy ending, um, happy culmination of energy, and um, and provide some stability to step into whatever the next thing is. Do we have any other pentacles? We don't. So so something something grounded, something practical, something useful, something in the earth of the earth um, is where you are right now, where you're sitting right now. I would get this is a security. A sense of security um, is part of this, part of this ten of pentacles kind of energy. All right. But what is blocking your growth? What is not letting you move forward? Like you've got some ending, some nice ending energy, legacies created, but what's blocking your growth? And and for that card, we got the six of wands. And the six of wands is about um the six of wands is about success and is about um moving on into you know moving on into the next chapter. Let me check something really quickly. I'll be right back. All right, back. So um, I just wanted to look something up on this, the Six of Wands. So, you know, it, it's generally thought to be success. Like it's like, like the things have come together. You've gotten what you wanted. Um, I always think of the Six of Wands and the Eight of Wands together. The Eight of Wands is like full steam ahead. And this is kind of the same idea. Like whatever you're building is going to succeed, but this is a block. And so I wonder with this 10 of pentacles, if you're not, um, maybe resting on your laurels, like I built it, it's here. I don't need to do any more work on it. I don't, you know, it's successful and, um, and it's great just the way it is. And so I wonder if there's a blockage there, if you're missing an opportunity because you're like, did that, got it done. So, so something around that, that, um, not being, not being ready to move or not, maybe not looking at the next opportunity because we're like, it's done. I don't, I don't have to, I, I set everything up and it's the way it should be. So, so interesting, interesting energy there. And, um, and yeah, so, so I think that maybe there's an invitation to not assume you're done yet, to maybe not assume that whatever you've built, whatever you've put together is the solid structure and, you know, the way you're always going to want it to be. Um, what can you invite in during this lunar cycle? What intentions will help you move forward? And you got the King of Cups. So kings are leaders. They're, they're external manifestations of the suit. And the suit of cups is about emotions and feelings. Um, this is about, we got some, not, um, 
I'm just checking for those. Yeah, the, the moon is in your ninth house. That's right. So so it can be about beliefs and religion and spirituality. It can be a spiritual leader. So so I think there's, you know, the the invitation here is to really invite in that Cancerian part of your chart. Really invite in that lunar energy that um that can take you places that maybe you don't necessarily um it, like you haven't gone before you haven't let yourself feel into something enough to do that um in terms of intentions the king of cups could also be a teacher not necessarily male or female um tarot is not gendered but just a, a teacher or a leader who can help you um find the right steps find feel into your heart feel into those emotional spaces and um and think about how that helps you move forward on whatever journey it is. Um, you know, maybe there's some vulnerability, maybe there's like stepping into really like committing to and feeling into a relationship because there's some seventh health and seventh house energy there. Certainly. Um, that maybe the King of Cups, maybe this is a seventh house person. Maybe this is a committed partner who um, who's just really in touch with feelings and emotions and, um, and you can use as your intention to connect more, more um, consciously with that person. All right, so what knowledge do you need going forward through this lunar cycle? And you got the Five of Cups. And so the knowledge that you need is that, so we've got this stability, we've got this, ugh, done it, checked it off my list, all feels good. And um, this card is saying that that even though you are feeling that way, or maybe if you if you realize that you are blocking yourself by feeling like you've checked it off the list, this card says, don't think about let me get my hands right, what you don't what you don't have, what's floating away from you. Remember what you do have. So it's kind of the like the don't wallow card. So some knowledge uh, or know that as you work through this lunar cycle, um, you may not have everything you think you want, or you may, you know, as you give up this vision of everything being success and perfect, um, that you may realize that there are pieces that you don't have, or you may feel some self-doubt or some imposter syndrome or any of those kinds of things. But, but this card is saying that you need to know that you have a lot of resources here. You have built a lot and you, um, you have access to that information. You don't need to doubt that whatever it is you're bringing in, whatever the next step is. Um, so, for example, because so much of this energy is in your seventh house in that committed relationship space, you know, maybe, maybe you're thinking, um, you know, my partner doesn't have all of these things. Uh, maybe it's a business partner. My business partner doesn't have all of these things, uh, you know, and, and the, the perfect business partner would have. And you're forgetting that that person does have some real skills and some things that can come in. So so this card is saying, know that, um, that, that once you open to, there's another place to go. Once you open to, um, that, you know, you don't have it, it's not all locked up. But know that it's not all lost either that there's still a lot of resources. There's ways you can go, doors that you can open. Um, in fact, I wonder if the Mars-Uranus conjunction might not kind of like, like crack this solid foundation and leave you feeling a little wobbly and leave you feeling in the in this Five of Cups way. Um, and what it's saying is, remember what you do have, that you have a lot, that you've built a lot, that you there's a lot of good faith in this and you don't, I mean, you're not, it's not, not all is lost and focusing on what you have rather than what you don't have will go a long way through this lunar cycle. And what is the emerging positive energy? You got the seven of wands and the seven of wands is a card of boundaries. So it's a card of drawing the line and holding your space, holding on to what's yours. And, um, and, you know, it can be, needing to defend what's yours but um but i think in the per in the 
emerging positive energy, like you have built a lot. There's a lot here. And opening the door, opening the door to some feelings and some, you know, some vulnerability uh, and, and, you know, remembering that you haven't lost everything, that, that, that it's still, there's still a lot there that you can't lose. And, and this is essentially saying that, um, that, that there may be some shifts in the structure, something surprising may come up, but it will make your boundaries stronger, that you will have a better sense of what's yours and where you can go and what you're looking, what you're looking to build, what your intuition is and your passion and your creativity is guiding you towards. All right, let's see what the Season of the Witch Lithodeck shows you. And it brought up scavenger hunt and the card says what you thought was hidden is hiding in plain sight the book goes on to say often the answer to your question or solution to your obstacle is right in front of your eyes requiring little more than a change in perspective holding on too tightly to something, identifying with a particular career, idea, relationship, or opinion causes tunnel vision, whereby you only choose to see your version of the story. May you find, um, you may find yourself with this card when you are too focused on one outcome and solution to your problems, refusing to look left and right or to consider someone else's ideas about how to proceed. Be careful to make space for others to share their wisdom and experiences, and don't be afraid to challenge your ideas of right and wrong, or you'll end up in one of the with only one egg in your basket, or perhaps nothing at all. And so I think that that speaks to this. Well, first of all, like invite people in. That seventh house, seventh house energy. Like this is a this is a time to find those relationships and really, um, really culminate um, with I with whatever that one-on-one -on -one kind of energy is but but it, you know it speaks to this says i've got it all covered and i think what you're going to see is you might not and um and there's an invitation you know to to uh to keep looking and to, but to not you don't have to look too hard it's not hidden like the secret there's not a secret somewhere um the information's available to you so friends, I hope that's helpful. Uh, take what works, leave the rest. If you liked it, um, if you liked what I had to say, if this was helpful to you, I would love a, um, a like. Um, I would love it if you would subscribe, share to your friends, um, let me know you're out there, leave a comment, all those things. Uh, thanks so much, and I will talk to you soon.